All right, we're back. And thank you, Alvaro, for supporting the community, supporting DEF CON, uh, for, your, of course, presenting here, and definitely supporting the Red Team Village as well. Um, we're glad to have you here, and the floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you so much, Omar. I'm so happy to be here another year presenting uh, the DEF CON Red Team Village. Welcome to Total Egression, uh, Evading Intrusion Detection System for Stealthy Implants. So first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Alvaro Folgado, hashtag RebuHacker, and I was a product security engineer uh, where I perform a lot of software and architecture security reviews. I do a lot of offensive AppSec, bug hunting, and uh, a little bit of research about this last topic. But in my free time, uh, I have been spending more or less the last two years uh, working in a main uh, project that is an implant framework. Um, it's kind of divided in two parts. The first part is, is, is the C2 of the operation manager, growth on Golan. Most of it, like it used the reform to deploy like infrastructure, proxies, and redirectors. And the other half is the modular Bichito that is called on Go, C++, and OGTC to perform a little bit more of like native uh, action over the target device. I had the lag in the past, as I say, to present this, this framework on, on the DEFCON Red Team Village of the past year alongside Shellcon. I am here again to speak a, a little bit of this kind of same topic, but connected to other stuff that I'm going to, I'm going to, Develop. So the connection here is, uh, you know, in the, in the last year when I was presenting this framework, one of the stuff that I was kind of most proud uh, about is like the ability of my implant of egressing, not just using HTTPS against a custom server, but using Gmail itself. And I was saying in, in my talk, like, you know, give me a string to egress and I shall hack the planet because, you know, you can use Gmail, but you can use any other software as service. And from that talk, I got an amazing amount of cool feedback. But uh, you know, one of the most interesting one was from one blue, in, blue, blue team engineer back then that told me, you know, Alvaro, this looks cool, but you know that by analyzing some header of your flow, like the TLS fingerprints, we could perfectly detect that that's a Go HTTP client. And you know, you know, if, if we kind of wildly is the kind of software we have in the domain host of a corporate network, that will look sketchy. So I was like, okay, so uh, you're telling me I'm ingressing through Gmail, but still not even by you know, doing a deep packet inspection, you are able to do that I'm using some kind of malware. So, you know, this really triggered my attention. So I focus my next year research on them towards like creating kind of an skeleton network model, not just for my tool, but also as a piece of code for every everything around the community to community to be able to use this for bypassing this kind of filtering of this kind, kind of rules that the blue team could have deployed in a corporate network. So you know, if we focus on this, uh, you know, on this field and we really want to like look stealthy at the network level, I wanted to start a little bit with like a high level vision of kind of the different techniques that a blue team or sister could deploy in a corporate network towards detecting or running implant in a foothold just by looking at the network package. So I like to divide in kind of like two big parts, right? Uh, we have all the deep packet inspection techniques where, you know, somehow the, the blue team has deployed the infrastructure to, to force every domain host uh, network package to go through a proxy, right? And this proxy normally is a TLS proxy that, that filter out all this flow and make the, the, the target operating system or laptop to accept the certificate so I can deep look at the body of, of the flow. And then, you know, by looking at this body, I can grab kind of common strings that match to malware and I can try to, to create a, a set of fine grained rules to detect which one are the flows that match most, most common like uh, indicative of compromise or most common like problems, right? Um, but I'm not gonna get still really uh, deep into these techniques. I want to focus a little bit in not deep packet inspection techniques, right? That, that those, those techniques will be focused not in what the body of the payload is, but more, but more in things like where the, the, the aggression is going, right? Which is the server where like, our foothold is connecting to. So, you know, the blue team will start to look at things like a sketchy IP range, range, or if we are using some kind of, of service like Amazon or Azure, they can start to look at the domain, right? Which kind of domain we are using. And if we use something like domain fronting, they start to look at, oh, which kind of operating system or software is listening to the connection, right? Which kind of certificate is, 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 this, is, is this server like serving, is self-signed or not? And then they will also could look at the wire itself, no? Which, which kind of protocol we are using if there is a huge amount of, 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 of package load on a DNS uh, uh, aggression, and, you know, they could say, oh, something is going on here. So, you know, if, if we come back to, to, the, to the concept of aggressing through a software as a service, like email, then we can finish with all the problems 
of detection by the endpoint, almost all of them. And we can do this easily because if it's a software as a service, if has the opportunity to modify an string, we can make our foothold to communicate through the C2 just by pulling, pushing data on it. And now is where it comes the funny part. Like we have finished with the problem with the endpoint, but still the blue team has powerful tools to analyze which kind of HTTP client we're using. And they can say, oh, this domain host is using a common browser. That looks good to me, but oh, this human resource laptop is running a Python script to, to go to whatever server or a Go client. That kind of look a little bit more sketchy. So at the end of the day, the blue team has a powerful tool to analyze before breaking the encryption through, a, through TLS fingerprints, which kind of software uh, the, the, the foothold is, is using for egress, which kind of software we are using or redirect or proxy or whatever to receive the connection. And by matching both of them, they could get a really strong indicator of compromise. This will work similarly to like antivirus or all host intrusion detection system, where they will extract a hash from the binary and compare with a public database. Instead of now doing that with the binary, they will do that with a TLS handshake, and they will extract a certain number of bytes, perform a hash, and compare with a public database. This is around a, a really interesting research that was done time ago by a bunch of blue team engineers. And alongside with this uh, research, they published it uh, with this GA3 tool. That is a Python script. I won't, I'm going to do a little bit of a deep dive what's going on. So let's imagine we're writing our implant, and now we need to think about how he's gonna aggress or how he's gonna connect to the C2, right? So if we are gonna use HTTPS, and a lot of, a lot of you will say, okay, don't use HTTPS, use HTTP, but you know, for some reason, we need to use HTTPS or, or endpoint for some reason, you said HTTPS. The first thing that the or implant will perform is opening a TCP socket. And following that TCP socket, we, the TLS handshake will start. And that TLS handshake has a, a, a lot of information on it because First, the client is going to tell to the server which kind of TLS version we want to use, which kind of cipher series you want to use, but particularly which kind of extension he want to use. And a lot of these bytes, that really relate to the kind of software we are using or the kind of library we are using to write our implant. In the same way, the server will do the same. So the Python script will parse this pickup of, you know, if we're using Wireshark or any other software to get them. And then we'll just select this, this, uh, this package and we'll analyze the bytes, transform them in an MD5 hash and match them to a really particular software. If we're writing with, with or implants, sometimes we, we rely on those libraries. And other time we're gonna use, use some software that is already matched and, and it's, it's already like give us a really like particular alert to the blue teamers. So if you follow the source code, you can go to the GA3 tool and see exactly what he's doing when you provide to the Python screen a pickup. But if we go to the Wireshark and we start to listening to, to, the, to the flows and we just open a browser that is performing HTTPS connection, we can easily filter those package and we can see what's going on. We can go to the header of the secure socket layer and we can see all these particular bytes that we have. And while TLS version and cipher suites are kind of easy to modify. There is a bunch of extensions that are assisted for the accepted by the RFC that can be configured. So the Python screen will just go over that set of package, divide those bytes in five sections, transform them in hexadecimal, and then generate this MD5 hash that particularly match a certain version of a software for the client and the server. So, okay, where are the red teamers? We know this is a problem and we know that we may be detected because of this. So now it's where it comes the idea of blending in the network and trying to, to like evading these, these uh, techniques, right? So I had a bunch of ideas. Um, my first idea was, okay, you know, I'm using a programming language. This programming language gave me the option to create my own HTTP client, choose the library I want to. But the problem is like most of the HTTP clients that accept TLS configuration, while they provide you a lot of bytes for configuring your own TLS handshake, they really don't provide you like an input where you can put all the bytes you like and the order you like, so you can have you know the hash to decide for copying another <laughs> client software. So you know this this was kind of a tricky one. So my next idea was okay, I will you know just open a TCP socket and throw there my copy a client hello package and see what happens. Obviously the TLS handshake breaks and it's not interesting to us because at the end of the day we need, we we need to use HTTPS. So my last option were like getting a little bit my hand dirty and go and modify the, the, the source code of, of the, the programming language I was using. In this case, it was Golem. So I will say, okay, I will add a feature. 
and this is more or less how it works. So, you know, and, and I'm sure this is similar in other languages that relate to which kind of language you're using for writing your implant, but at least in Golan, uh, you, you are, when you want to regress, you need to graph your HTTP client. And when you create a HTTP client and you want to use HTTPS, you provide the TLS configuration that is like a struct. Before requesting uh, to the endpoint with a postcat, whatever HTTP request you want to, uh, the, the language will go through the, the flow of crafting this TL, TLS hello. And it will take kind of your configuration and then grab up the, the bytes and send them to perform the handshake. The problem is, I was telling before, we don't have a feature where we can like put whatever bytes we want to. So I modify uh, the, the source code of, of Golang and the HTTP client to accept in the TLS configuration a new string input. And this string input will be exactly what the GA3 tool provide to us. So in that case, we can use like use the GA3 tool for copying a Chrome, Firefox, Opera browser and throwing in the uh, compilation of our implant. In that way, uh, when we go to TLS, uh, the TLS flow, and need to add another part of the code where you are like marshalling or creating this claim, hello. I added a for loop and for each hexadecimal value, I kind of copy a reference, which is the package or the, or the syntax that respect the RFC. So if you have a bunch of hexadecimal bytes in the right order, you can extract the fingerprint of the browser you, you are targeting. It's true, there are a lot of them, and I'm sure this extension will be like modified with the time, but I have enough right now entropy or, or, or like avali av av availability of, of like hexadecimal bytes already caught for like setting most of the browser. If you feel that you need more hexadecimal bytes, I will add them. There is no problem. The source code is already published in these uh, links on GitHub. So, okay, now we have the HTTPS client we need for copying rightful connection of browsers and, and any other like software you like, antivirus, aggression, whatever. But now it came the problem that we want to aggress using uh, Gmail. That I need to uh, to to config to to change on the source code. So um, that say um, I want to like uh, provide you a, a flow of how this implant will work uh, on the background once we we get the execution on the foothold. So when we craft our implant, the first the first thing we need to have is the Gmail connected app. We configure it and we provide those credentials to the the C2 and the C2 on the completion of the implant will provide both the credential to the to, to the Dichito alongside with the TLS fingerprint. And then the implant will start with the aggression. And for aggression, the first thing he will do is, is using the refresh token against the Google authentication servers. And then when he get the access token, it will start to, to like push pull information through uh, Gmail. The C2 or the operation server will do similarly and we could create a data connection for sending receive commands perfectly and totally transparently to the operator. At the eyes of the blue team that is looking to this uh, proxy, it will just look like a Chrome uh, browser, which is good to go. Um, so to speak a little bit about the package inspection on how we can uh, bypass or avoid this stuff. So, you know, if we have the bad luck that the SOC or the scissor is gripping common string uh, within or like flow against Gmail, we could kind of use some kind of library of cryptography and share a symmetric key with the C2 and then common grabs or common arrays will not pop up. If we have the bad luck that is a thread hunter catching our flows, we can also we can also use other techniques like stenography. I wouldn't be not as difficult because also Gmail provides us the ability to attach images to the draft emails. So a, a little bit of how the, the network module with the encryption will work in just a time is just doing the similar thing, putting on the body of the draft, whatever JSON payload we want to process by Hive. But instead of just putting plain strings, we can use like encrypting with this symmetric key. I have still not developed this full model, but it will be added to Siesta time in the future. So let's let's go ahead with the demo. So what I have created here is to try to reproduce this environment where the blue team has uh, deployed this kind of detection technique in a network. I have created two different implants. This is the graphical interface of Siesta Time. And alongside all the inputs that I'm not gonna speak about each one of them, particularly we see here, we have this TLS fingerprint we can extract for GS3 tool. In that way, we can create different implants that mimic whatever connection we want to. If we focus a little bit the network topology of the demo, 
what this is going to look like uh, is I am using a Vimy World Workstation with three machines on it, but particularly interesting is we have the Windows 10 foothold that is going to run two different implants, and every connection that goes through email is going to be read by a Ubuntu server that is a polar, polar proxy, uh, it's a TLS proxy with polar proxy, which is not the most interesting. The important thing is running a Suricata uh, network intrusion detection system. And you have a bunch of alert just to like detect that if the TLS fingerprints on a HTTP client to show me an alert. If not, you can go ahead. So let's go to the demo. Um, so as you can see here, this is a graphical interface of siesta time. These are all the jobs that the Hive has processed already. And now we have two implants that are created. That means we can just download the executable and somehow we will make the foothold to execute right, through any attack vector we want to. So uh, this is the Ubuntu machine that is listening to all the connection or the aggression of the foothold. And we have the Suricata running on it. Suricata will match the two following rules. Uh, these two rules, uh, they're using a GA3 plugin for Suricata and they will get the, the header of the TLS connection of every aggression package. They will generate an MD5, MD5 hash. If that hash match this one, we will pop up an alert. We can check that these two hashes they match by the public database of VS3, a Go HTTP client. So let's search for the hash, similarly to virus total, but with TLS fingerprints, we see this is a Go HTTP client, right? Um, we are gonna run the first uh, implant in the, in the Windows 10 foothold, and we're gonna be detected. So um, the, the interesting thing about this too is like, uh, obviously this, this Go client is gonna be using the default configuration, but we can change things. But the co cool thing about this is like, it doesn't matter how many configuration is changed by using a Go HTTP client, but at, at the end of the day, all those hashes, they will be registered with this public database. So we have two appearance on the log of Suricata, and the reason is, because I was, was saying before, one request is for getting the access token for the Google Auth authorization servers, and the second one is for pushing, pulling data from Hive through Gmail. So let's clean the logs. And now uh, we are gonna do exactly the same, but using the implant that has been creating with Siesta Time and with the TLS fingerprints of a Chrome browser. So um, the creation of the implant is just the same process. We're just gonna change is the execution of it and how we detect it. And the data flow is just the same. So let's execute the implant that now is copying the fingerprint of a Chrome browser. And let's go back to the Suricata, and we see there is not any log, but let's recheck what's going on. So let's open a Wireshark and let's start to like detect and read all the packets that are going through the to, to, through the TLS proxy. And, and the objective of this is, since we don't maybe don't trust what Suricata is saying to us, right? Let's make sure that this fingerprint is a Chrome browser instead of a Go HTTP client. So let's filter. Let's get all the make hello, and then let's export it in a pickup. And we can use this pickup uh, for like a GA3 to parse it and tell to us which kind of fingerprints of bytes is, is detecting from this aggression. This way will be the same that we need to follow if we need to copy the TLS fingerprint from any other rightful software. So here you see there is like this five section of bytes. This one will be the input for Siesta time frame. We want to generate a, an implant with these fingerprints. And there is two different MD5 hashes because as this is a TLS proxy, uh, you know, there is a second fingerprint for polar proxy itself. But if, if, if we go and we take the fingerprint of the implant, we are gonna see that this is effectively, the public database of GA3 is effectively pointing it to a Chrome browser instead of a Go HTTP client or a Java client, Python client, whatever we have, HTTP library we have used for our implant to aggress. So if we go back to, to Siesta Time uh, graphical interface, we can see we already have the host infected. We have a kill one implant, so that's offline, but the other is still alive. So now we can do things like, you know, in injecting a shell or injecting a reverse SSH secure shell. We have all the information from the target host that we have infected. And we also have like, you know, an asynchronous interactive shell. And all this will happen uh, totally transparent to the operator and through Gmail. You see the fingerprints we need. So I want to speak last but not least um, 
how to help defender, how to make them better, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, the rating operation is have a, a lot of reasons, but, but we, we want to make the defenders to, to be better, right? And to be prepared to this kind of attack. So if I focus on the network intrusive detecting techniques and in the tel, t, TLS, a fingerprint detection, uh, if you ask me if there is gap of improvement, I will say yes. Um, there is, um, for one reason, that the, the Python script of GS3 it's, is, you know, going through all these extensions bytes so that the big entropy happens, but it's just taking the headers. Um, you know, the Python screen, we could write a new for loop for like getting more bytes inside this, like an onion layer, right? Um, and this is something that GS3 is not doing right now. That will always generate more MD5 hashes and more different uh, entropy to, to search. But that's say that's cool, but this is the the, 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 the catch of the, of the, of the of the cat of the mouse. If they do that, I will just add another for loop in my HTTPS client and then we're in the same. What I think is interesting is not just using network intrusion de detecting technique, but you know, focusing on the host intrusion detecting techniques or now called EDR and trying to match kind of the two signatures and see if something is going on. I say this because while my, my Bichito is aggressively really efficiently, it's still doing not so like a straightforward actions in the operating system. And you know, this could be easily detected, like, you know, bombing a cmd.x with a power cell x, or uh, for persisting use, uh, calling the APIs of a scheduled desktop of Windows. This, this could be like a little bit more like a shiny at the hour of detection. So um, that's everything. Thank you so much. Um, the source code is already published for everything. And there is a user guide uh, for the Siesta time framework uh, as well. Uh, I have the Discord and I can answer questions, so just let me know. Okay, yeah, the slides will be, I will publish the slides, source code is there, the resource guide, yeah. yeah. So that's everything, thank you so much.